Well, today Rob hosted our first citizens election panel for 770 CHQR, and uh, I'd like to introduce you to our brave souls who came in this morning. We have uh, Michael, Julie, Deirdre, and Mo. And you guys, how was your experience? Michael, you had a chance to sort of, uh, I heard a little bit of your conversation. You had a chance to discuss your, uh, your political positioning and what matters to you for this election. So for people who missed the conversation, what does matter to you? Um, I think as a political conservative and a social liberal, making sure that we're covering off everybody in Alberta properly, making our economy grow, making sure we're protecting those that need to be protected, uh, but first and foremost, get our economy moving and get our province back as the leader in Canada, not the uh, one that everyone beats up on. Right, and it's a hard position to be in sometimes. Julie, what was it that you took away from today? What, what stuck out the most in your mind from your conversation? Um, basically, I think what stuck out most in my mind, just us all talking together, is how much we actually agreed on. And the selection actually probably doesn't need to be as nasty as it is, because we agree on a lot. And it's funny that I think that, you know, so often we get into these conversations and everyone says they don't like a negative campaign, and yet it seems like every campaign is, and who does that speak to? Do you think that that's effective at all? Um, I would like to think that it's not effective, but I think it can be and I think the NDP specifically this time around really didn't have any choice but to go out with their guns blazing. I think the UCP can afford to be a little bit nicer but if I was advising the NB NDP I would probably tell them to get the knives out and go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well and I, now Deirdre you're a, you love politics, you're a political nerd, self-proclaimed political nerd. Uh, so as you're watching this, are you just itching to be somebody who can advise these campaigns on what to do, or would you rather never be in that war room? Oh, some days, some days. Um, one of the things that, I mean, I'm lucky that I don't have to be quiet, so it's actually really helpful because I have an outlet. So when I see something, when I have some idea of what I think campaigns should be doing, what they should be paying attention to, I just write it down and there it goes out. I mean, it's, so I, I get to have that say without, I guess you could also say that I don't have anybody coming back to me the saying, repercussions wow, of, yeah. you had a really bad idea. <laughs> well, I didn't tell you. <laughs> what did you take out of today's conversation? One of the unfortunate things I think that I took out of today's conversation, uh, myself and Julie as well, both of us kind of saying I'd rather be voting in another way but this is how I feel like I have to vote, um, especially because of, it's a tight race in my riding. It might be a tight race in a lot of ridings, but we kind of felt that, I guess, last year or after last election was that you had all of these people saying, I'm not happy with how I voted. And it made for a really difficult four years for that government, I think, because, yeah, so I mean, I, I'm now kind of, I'm sitting there wondering, is that the smartest way to go? Or well, should you just... I was just going to ask that. Now, Mo, well, you've been in Calgary all of your life and uh, worked for the Calgary Police Service. And, you know, we know that in Canada, both provincially and federally, a lot of people say that the last couple of elections, people were not voting for who they wanted. They were voting for who they didn't want. So what's your perspective on that? Well, I think that's exactly what typically happens. We vote people out of office, not into office. And I think just to, uh, to Deirdre's point, um, that's what happened and then we had this kind of like this buyer's remorse after um, it was funny talking to people that voted NDP and I it took a long time to find somebody that actually did it vote did in. It. <laughs> that was the key it was the admission I didn't I, I voted uh, Wild Rose but uh, um, it was funny trying to find people that actually voted NDP was was it, it was pretty hard and then and there was lots of remorse I think because of that they just didn't vote somebody in they voted somebody out and I think when that happens I think there's a real there's a real risk that you're gonna get something you don't really want so out of curiosity I'll pose this to you if any of you have an answer for this but what could they have done differently as far as getting pipelines built do you think that that's a provincial issue or do you think that that's something that I don't I don't tie? I don't personally hang that one on on Rachel Notley at all no. Um, I, I think, uh, unfortunately, I think she was, like, well, like, like you said, she, she created an alliance with, with Trudeau, which was, that was, in and of itself, is probably going to be pretty much fatal. Um, and then she was late coming to the party. I don't think she really realized, first of all, the, the necessity in the pipeline, and, and I think she didn't, she didn't support it right out of the chute. 
Um, I think it took her a while to kind of realize, oh my God, we're running out of money here. We're going to need this revenue. And then she was she was probably 18 months or two years. I behind. think that's the problem with the NDP policy as being anti-oil, anti-pipeline. It got in the way. It got in the way because they're even from their federal. Um, and the provincial parties and the NDP, they're one and the same. It's like, we don't support this, but if we, but if we don't, as an NDP government, where are we going to get the money so, to fund our social programs? So, again, you're looking at two sides of a coin going, I have to, but I hate it, but it's needed, but I hate it. And it's like, well, I'm not going to trust you because the minute you start getting things the way you want, what are you going to do with the oil? Julie, do you think they've changed their position from where they started when they got into office on, on pipelines? Um... Yeah, I do think they changed their perspective a bit. You sound about as reluctant as them. That's right, that's exactly. I think yeah, they, I think they did yeah. a bit. Yeah, I, think I think they just got a bit of education and looked at the books and were kind of like, oh, uh -oh. that's the what is run dry, schools. literally. Uh, you guys, thank you so much. We look forward to doing another Citizens Election Panel next Thursday. Have a great week. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much.